this is the opening contest of Titan FC 61. Introducing in first, out of the blue corner, this man walks in with a record of three wins, one loss. He's a freestyle fighter, weighing in 170.4 pounds, fighting out of Nashville, Tennessee. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Irvin Super Jones. And across the cage, fighting out of the red corner, this man walks in with a record of four wins, one loss. He's a mixed martial artist who weighed in at 170.6 pounds. Fighting out of Miami, Florida, here is Colin Loopers. And the third man in the cage, your referee, Mike Cardoso. Colin, Irvin. Okay guys, we're gonna roll the rules in the locker room. I want you to protect yourself at all times and follow my commands at all times. You wanna to touch gloves, do it now. Good luck, Let's go, Irvin, it's all you. <laughs> I love that. I'm not gonna be the first guy to touch gloves, but they ended up doing it anyway. As you can see, folks, no crowd. You're gonna hear a lot of the corners, a lot from the fighters. It is Colin Luberts with the white trunks, Irvin Jones with the black and white trunks. You even might hear me in the background accidentally, you know, <laughs> you know coaching people. <laughs> well, if it comes from Shorty Torres, it's gonna be good advice. Just no headbutts, guys, no headbutts. So Colin, his last win, he came off of a knockout, a pure KO, just one shot, right hand, and a walk-off KO. So is he coming in with the same type of hype? What almost always happens after fights like that, guys get the bug. They get addicted to that feeling of crushing a guy and walking off. And a lot of times, you spend the rest of your career chasing that, even when you shouldn't. And Irvin was telling me yesterday, obviously he saw that. So his, his job right now is to stay uh, slow, methodical, technical, and take this fight down to the ground. Oh, neither guy rushing it so far. Seems like the taller man, Colin Lubritz, willing to work the outside. See a lot of fighters shorty, they have the range advantage, they have a little bit of height, but they end up being so aggressive, they nullify their advantage. Good stuff right there by Irvin Jones. But Lubert's content to take the outside. And it's, it seems that they're both playing the, you know, the turn game. You go, I go, you go, I go, and one guy's trying to counter and react. A lot of times when two fighters set a rhythm, it's the one who breaks that rhythm that finds success, but both guys content to feel it out early, showing a lot of maturity in this fight. It seems like right now, Colin's one the, to be attacking first, and Irvin's the one countering. He's just trying to you know, stay nice and slow and ready. Irvin throwing the hands up, almost daring Lubritz to come in and do something, to give up that range advantage. Lubert six foot two, as I said, two inch height advantage over Irvin Jones, but he stands even taller than he is. It kind of exaggerates that height disparity. He likes to let that chin float pretty high. And Irvin's counting really well, so what Colin needs to do is now start like he's doing there, start throwing feints out there, trying to change his rhythm so Irvin has to second guess what he's gonna do next. Yeah, it was a three feints in a row in that sequence. There's another one just trying to see how Irvin Jones reacts. See when Irvin Jones attacks and it's three and four. He's not coming in with singles against the taller, rangier opponent. And that's what you have to do. Again, being a shorter athlete, you have to kind of rush forward and understand that you might take one or two or a few just to land your big one. Two questions have been answered immediately. Number one is these guys are not in a hurry. They're not trying to rush it. That's a problem a lot of fighters have in their first 10 fights. They get a little too frantic. And both guys sticking to their game plan. So far, no one getting rushed, no one getting knocked off their tracks. Not yet. And it's nice how Colin is now starting to mix it up with the kicks. Instead of just being a, a straight boxer, he's mixing up the teep kicks, roundhouse kicks, or even roundhouse uh, snap kicks, and just, again, changing up the game. Nice snap on that leg kick. See Jones reaching for it a bit. That's something you don't want to get caught doing is reaching for the kick. 
they will change it up and go to the head and make you pay for that one. Now, let's say Collins, because he's throwing the, the kicks of the legs and just changing it up in general, Irvin's not countering as much. And now the boxing starts to work again. Lugut's corner urging him to throw a bit more hands, get his boxing involved. He's doing well on the outside, but I think he's respectful of the power so far from Irvin Jones, who's landed some good punches over the top. And again, you don't need to be a, a haymaker thrower, all that stuff. Just one punch with small MMA gloves could change the whole difference of this fight. Jones staying light on that lead leg. That's usually because you want to check and be ready to counter the kick. And Lubert's throwing a lot of them. Neither fighter so far committing to the takedown, no one lowering their level. They seem content to kickbox for the most part, Shorty. Yeah, Lubert, he's now taking control towards the end of the round while Irvin was winning the earlier half. Now again, Lubert's now changing his rhythm. Now he's shin blocking. Now he's a little more defensive. Now he's changing up his combinations and taking control because of it. Now one of the problems is judges tend to remember what happened at the end of the round more than they do at the beginning. You want to finish strong more than you want to start strong. Whoa, nice, nice left hook. And counter. Oh, he has him hurt. He is wobbled. Is there time enough to finish? And there is not. We will see around two. And we see that slow walk back to the cage, you know, to his corner. Because he did get caught. It was a nice check left hook. Also looks like he might be limping a little bit. I don't know if that's because he's staggered or his looks like his right leg. He is certainly limping a little bit, Shorty. I know he definitely went shin to shin. I don't know if that was the right or left leg. But either way, just that one good shot. Again, he's wobbling back to his corner. Right now is his time to just catch his breath, reassess himself, and go out there with a little bit of a different game plan. Now, one thing we <laughs> you have to keep in mind, if you've ever cornered anybody, and I've talked to a lot of corner people from different eras, and they go, the one thing you can't do is get a fighter's chin back. You can give him some water, you can try and help him out, give him tactical advice, but the shot that hurt him at the end of round one, that's not gonna go away in 60 seconds, Shorty. Will we see a very aggressive Luberts? That's a check, check left hook you talked about right on the chin. Will we see him be very aggressive at the start of round two? Yeah, and it wasn't a hard shot either. It was just nice and out there. And again, that's sometimes what you need to do. That's what a check, uh, a check left hook is. You're not putting them so much power in it. It's just right there. And again, it changed the, the and it solidified that Luber might have had that first round. And this is exactly what Irvin Jones need. A little break, a little water on the canvas. It gives him an extra couple seconds because that was not a lot of time to clear your head, Shorty. Round two, Colin Luberts in the white trunks versus Irvin Jones in the black and white trunks. But Jones rocked at the end of round one, really staggered, but not enough time to finish. And so we hope Irvin's now putting the pressure on. He doesn't want to walk backwards because then Luberts is just going to come in and keep on throwing those left hooks, a big power right hand, and continue moving forward. Now, if you're Irvin Jones, is it worth that risk to get into punching range and be a little bit more aggressive, but you might take that shot? He can. He just has to make sure that this time he keeps his hands up and starts bobbing and weaving, moving his head appropriately. Are you surprised a little bit Luberts didn't come out guns blazing in round two? A lot of times you want to test that chin early. So far, he's going back to that patient style. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I, I believe he saw Irvin kind of walk out his usual self. So, you know, you still have two more rounds. You don't want to rush anything, and then now you get caught. A wounded animal is always dangerous. That's what you teach in combat sports. Until the bell rings, that guy can answer back and hurt you. And Lubert's kind of going back to, as you said, that game plan of, hey, work behind the jab, throw the kicks, throw the feints, not getting overly aggressive against a man he had hurt at the end of the last round. The only thing Irvin's doing a little bit different in this round is that besides walking forward, he's throwing combinations to really solidify that leg kick at the end. Again, he's changing his own game, so Colin doesn't have the opportunity to, to throw his boxing. Now Lubert's it's taking the center of the cage and he's walking forward, push, pushing Irvin back. And that was the same thing towards the end of the first round. And do you think he needs to get that strategy started maybe a little bit earlier? We see it's only about a minute and a half through, a minute and three quarters through, and yet he's going to that strategy a little earlier. Do you think that's a good idea? I think that is a good idea. I mean, you saw how he was able to catch the left hook at the end of the first round. Maybe he's able to catch that a little earlier this time where he has a lot more time to work and capitalize on it. Good job going back to the leg kick. 
Irvin Jones answering back with the head kick. Both guys powerful with that leg kick, Shorty. Trading back and forth. Those aren't fun at the next day. That at the Muay Thai fight, that's when everybody's shouting, right? Oi, yeah, oi. Oi. <laughs> I might get into it too, you never know. There's not fans. There's no crowd, so, so just be you and me. Yeah, we I gotta, I gotta I'll do, do it, it again too. <laughs> again, Irvin taking the center of the cage this time, pushing the pace, trying to change up the game again. So this round's going back and forth now. Are you surprised so far? No commitment to the takedown by Irvin Jones. He said that was a big part of his strategy, but hasn't committed to it yet. Yeah, I'm surprised, especially on the inside. You know, that's where he initially got caught was the check left hook. Why not drop your head and go for that double leg? Go for that single, or if not, just utilize the clinch. And no feints either on the takedown. Neither guy has really faked for it. Tried to get a bite, maybe bring his hands down. You see the slip over there by Luberts, slipping to his right. This is definitely a kickboxing. Game. Yes. Trust me, I don't mind. <laughs> and we see him now utilizing the clinch, putting Luberts against the fence. All right, but no real commitment to it. Let it go pretty easily, and we're back to the kickboxing match in MMA gloves. Good work with that left jab. We'll see if Lubert decides to throw that fast jab, but we'll end it with the right hand immediately after that. George Foreman once said, you want to be a good fighter, don't worry about the jab. You want to be a great fighter, make it your best punch. Lubert's so far, a lot of MMA fighters not great with the jab. Lubert's staying behind it, using his range. Yeah, I'm the same way. People forget about their basics. I've done that before after knocking someone out, so I threw nothing but right hands, and now I'm getting punched way more than I should. <laughs> Pain will teach you. Don't touch the stove, you'll get burnt. <laughs> I touched it three times until I learned. Wisdom from Jose Shorty Torres, who has burned himself three times on the stove. He knows what he's talking about. A slip in tortillas. Yeah. <laughs> now it is Luberts walking Irvin Jones down, staying behind the jab. Looks like he might be thinking about another power shot before the end of the round. Looks like he's getting ready to maybe load his punch. This round's a little harder to judge yes. because they've been going back and forth. But like you said, who's going to take the center of the cage at the end of the round? And that's something that judges really reflect on. Nice glancing head kick. Who will make a statement in the final seconds? In round two, just like round one, a kickboxing match in an MMA cage. And this is a really technical fight going back and forth. Again, they've shown each other all their repertoire, but now trying to mix it up, change the rhythm so they can change it in that third round. A big question here, Shorty, is who thinks they're ahead? Do they think it's tied? Do they think they have to push it in that third round? I don't think either guy can feel comfortable because it was so back and forth, just as we're seeing now. Yeah, you know, if, if I were the judge, Luber might be winning that first round, but that second round is definitely back and forth. So either way, they have to push in the third round and really solidify this fight. This was the story of the fight. Titan Bullies replay. Both guys willing to stand and kickbox, having their moments. Irvin Jones hurt at the end of round one, but seemed like he had a clear head in round two, certainly mentally back in the fight. I just want to say those dogs are bigger than me. No joke. <laughs> stronger, too. No and joke. That, stronger Definitely than both of us. Stronger. Yep. No joke. I got two pits myself. Oh, God. This is, they're huge. Don't make me get a third one, because I will. <laughs> it's like tattoos. I have a half pit bull, half Yorkie. Yeah, <laughs> oh that's an interesting mix. That oh. is. Round three. Colin Luberts in the white versus Irvin Jones in the black and white. Irvin Jones starting out aggressively. He's starting like out like a guy who thinks he might be behind and needs to finish in this third round. And that's a smart thing to do, whether, no matter how this round decides to go, it just shows that he's pushing the pace, showing that he's, that he's aggressive. And when the round is that close, aggression can play a big role. Winging right hand, a little clipped him with the back fist there. Andre Arlovsky back fist. Oh, love it. 
Yeah. I'm old. I still think of Shoney Carver, Matt Serra. <laughs> no, no. Any idea what I'm talking about? I do. Oh, Shoney Carver God. came out of our gym. Kids these days. Shoney Carver no, came no. out of my gym back no, in the he day. Spec'd. No, he specked. No, he specked. He's so funny. <laughs> He's a character, man. Mr. International. We you call it the Chicago Pimp Slap. Mm -hmm. Beautiful shot against Matt Serra. Look it up if you don't know it. Ruberts, you see, trying to get. Oh, clipped oh. him again with the left hook. Same punch Beautiful as before. And the mouthpiece is out. And has going. him off balance. Oh. He is still wobbled. A oh, beautiful jab, and he has him on shaky legs. Oh, man, and they're countering back and forth. Irvin Jones showing that he is still dangerous. His corner right in front of us, urging him on to finish his opponent. That was an appropriate time. The ref waited so Lubert can actually try to finish it. If he didn't, cool. Now there's some space to put the mouth guard in. Good job by the referee. Irvin's not giving up. He's popping back and forth. He's throwing his combinations, and he's pushing forward, showing that he's a real warrior. Yeah, but you see those power punches he threw to back Lubert's off. That makes him respect him. Come in to finish me. I got something waiting for you, and that's why I think Lubert has backed off a little bit. Look for a second like he might have this finished. And it's a good thing for Lubert is that he has the cleaner hands on the inside, and that's why for the two times that he's been able to rock Irvin, it's just the counter strikes that he has. Pretty rare for a guy with his build to have the cleaner inside punches. Taller, rangier, and yet that left hook has been right on the money. And it shows boxing is mainly his game. You know, Irvin's more of a kickboxing guy. You can tell that when he comes in, his hands kind of go down a little bit, and that's how he's getting countered every single time. But now he's on the back foot. So any of the punches he lands, unless he's moving forward, they're not going to be as strong. And what we call arm punches, all they are are arms and shoulders. They don't have the power of the hip, heel, and hand. And he's throwing those leg kicks, but again, when you're moving back, that's half the force, that's half the pressure. They're not as hard. You have to wonder, Irvin Jones rocked again in this third round. He's rocked in the first. How much he's aware of what's going on. A lot of times when you get hit like that, you're fighting on instinct. You're not making a game plan. You saw the difference in that leg kick. He walked forward and kicked it, and Lubert had to turn his body just to take the impact. And he even changed his stance in the process. Once again, sort of a half shot there, and then back to the body lock. No real level changing commitment to any of those takedowns. Maybe you heard you say Shoney Carter. Hey, man, Shoney Carter's my guy, dude. <laughs> I'll tell him you said hello. He's a good guy. Please do. Any, any guy who would walk in and, like, Pimp outfit and like the cane and everything. That, that's my guy. That's his every, every time he that, walked in. That's his everyday outfit. That's how he dresses. Like period. 100%. Okay. There you go. It's not an act. I love that. <laughs> Lubert's going back to walking Irvin Jones down. Seems as though he seems content. It was one minute left. Why risk going in? If the round is his. I would say the fight is his as well. Could be he's decided. Why risk getting a counter knockout? Walk this guy down, win the fight. Do you think he's made that deal with himself? I believe so. But Lubert did tell me, you know, before the fight, that his goal after this is to make that great of a performance to possibly be on Dana White's Contender Series or to move on to the next level. So this is his opportunity to put on a show, especially when you have a guy backing up. Very good point. He is still moving forward, but not throwing with the intent and volume he was throwing when he thought he had Irvin Jones hurt. And you even see the difference. Like, the mat might be a little slippery, so Irvin Jones is, is slipping while backing up because he's on his heel. But Lubert's is walking forward, you know, kind of more staying flat-footed, but putting the pressure on and staying balanced the entire time. Final 10 seconds of round three. Colin Lubert's in control of this third round. Irvin Jones has had his moments, especially in round two. And it was a kickboxing match from start to finish. Colin Lubert's, though, I think in rounds one and three, landed the more meaningful punches. And that was a great back and forth battle, but I think the rounds that really solidified it were one and three, where Lubert's was able to uh, wobble Irvin Jones and really put him on that back foot.
after three rounds of action, we go to our judges' scorecards, and they scored it 29, 28, 30, 27, and 30, 27 for your winner by way of unanimous decision, Colin Luber. No surprise there, a unanimous decision win for Colin Luberts in a very competitive fight with Irvin Jones. And I'm here with your winner, Colin Luberts. So the fight in the beginning was going back and forth. How do you feel after catching with that chef left hook in, in the first round? Uh, I believe I called him towards the very end of that first round. And right away I knew, I was like, all right, we're gonna go to the next round, he's gonna have time to recover. His corner's gonna tell him like, you gotta either go for it a little bit more, or you gotta be more, uh, more consistent. I figured he thought I would probably come real hard the next round, so I like to try to mix the tempos up, but everything this guy threw was, was really hard. He's a look at this guy, he's a big strong guy, so I had to be careful. These four ounce gloves, one shot will put you out. So I figured just intelligence, be long, use my range, be on the outside. And uh, I really wanted to finish. Sometimes you don't always get the finish. I should have listened to my corner and my coaches a little bit more. They believe in my skills 100%. I'm talking about Master Caesar, Daniel Valverde, my team at MMA Masters. They, uh, they molded me, they made me who I am today. I'm, uh, I'm happy with my performance. I, re I, I really was training to go for the finish though. Um, I owed that to my team, but I'm walking home with a W tonight, so that's all that really matters. And what's something you want next? Because again, you fought a really great contender. The fight went back and forth. You solidified round one and three with those wobbling uh, uh, left, right, left and right hands. What do you want next? <laughs> hey, Dana, I'm five and one now. I'm coming off a two fight win streak. You saw my one fight. I kind of fluked that one, but I'm back on top now. What's up with the contender? This, hey, I'm gonna be ready. My, my, my leg hurts a little bit, but give me a week, I'll be right back to it. Dana, let me get on this contender this season, baby. Let's go. Dana, he's calling you out, contender series. Your winner, Colin Luberts. Uh, one more thing, I give all my thanks to my coaches right here, Master Caesar and Daniel Valverde. These guys molded me up from a little bit. I was coming up, I didn't know anything about the game. I'm still learning so much from these guys every day. This, really wish I could have gave them the finish tonight, but a win is a win. Master Daniel and Master Sensei, thank you guys for everything. Correction, Master, I appreciate it, man. Congratulations. Your winner, Colin Luberts. Colin Luberts, ladies and gentlemen, his.